Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, well, you and I have all met like 16 year old girls and we all have an impression of what they like. Uh, but uh, instead of just going out for like parties or just chilling, we have someone with us here today who has actually taken the time to publish her own book at the age of 16. Uh, we have with us today Neelandana Shakya. Hello Neelu. Can I call you that? Obviously. Hello, yeah. Krishna. Hey, Neelu. Uh, so, it's, it's like really awesome that you could join us today. Uh, so, uh, like, what inspired you to write? I mean, not all 16-year-olds think that, hey, I want to write a book. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was 16. I, didn't, I wasn't on that line of writing a book or having anything put into a compilation. Uh, that was just very spontaneous. I was just... Um, writing poetry for myself and I was just doing things that I thought, you know, interested me and uh, I just fell along those lines and then somewhere in the middle, like a friend of mine, uh, he asked me if I wanted to compile all my poems because uh, I was known for writing poetry in the class. I mean, like me and my friend, um, her name was Nandika and uh, we'd uh, just write poetry on the board and uh, as a form of rebellion and just leave it for the class to leave him and if they didn't understand what the hell was written on the blackboard. So uh, just those little things, just, it was a small diary that turned into a book somehow. I mean, uh, I, I didn't expect it to be a book, but then uh, someone happened to, uh, you know, after going to various publications, they're like, oh no, we don't want to publish your work. Oh yes, we we're, we're not quite into publishing poetry, but then, you know, someone was starting up so, in here. Yeah, so, like, you had a lot of trouble finding publishers? Yes, yes, we did. Uh, and where was this published? This was published in Nigeria, Lagos. Oh, so, this is the book, okay, for all you people. It's called Netted Shadows. Uh, so... It's published by Oak Tea Press. Hmm, in Nigeria, right? Okay. Uh, so, like, uh, so, uh, once you did, did publish the book, how was the reception? Like, what do people tell you about your book? Uh, I had both positive and negative comments on the book. I mean, for some people the book was just too dark and dreary. <laughs> and for some people it was inspiring. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I was really glad that I could inspire uh, the juniors in my school. Because I never thought that, you know, I would be able to inspire someone. Because I was inspiring, I was looking around for things to inspire me. So I didn't thought I'd be an inspiration. So I was glad about that, but um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> okay, uh, so like as a, you know, when you published it, you got to meet uh, the Nobel laureate, Wole Soinka, right? Yeah. So how was that experience? Oh, it was really wonderful. I mean, he came over to our house and he must have been really tall, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I hugged him a couple of times. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and then I realized the height difference. <laughs> and then he, he told me that he, he's really media unfriendly. That's what I had heard. But mm -hmm. I mean, after meeting him, it didn't really seem like that because he seemed like a really warm hearted person. I mean, he was very open. He was really inviting. And um, he was just telling me about, you know, random things that you wouldn't really expect a person of that stature, you know, to say to you, mm -hmm. and just things about his life, uh, like when he was in prison, how did he cope with it, how did he deal with it, and he was really frank with everything. Mm -hmm. He told me he, that he hated math, and that, <laughs> that time Don't I could understand <laughs> with it, exactly, I could relate, I'm like, yeah, no, I, I totally understand that, but then he's like, no, there's a catch to it, I mean, you can't always um, diss the subject, because he really ended up needing it when mm -hmm. he was in jail, and he was held captive, yeah. so, I mean, just, uh, you know, things that you hate are things that you end up, you have to go to them at the end of the day. I mean, it's not like uh, you can totally rule them out of your life. They are a part of you in some way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, he taught me that. And then he invited me for the Black Lagos Festival as well. Oh, so, so like, what is the Black Lagos Festival? It's this heritage festival uh, in which, um, I mean, he he organizes these cultural events and then there are some literary events where you can recite poetry and um, there are lots of plays put up. There are lots of um, uh, people who sing. I mean, it's, it's a whole literary fest. So oh. it's just along those lines. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, about uh, Wole Soinka, like, what was the one most inspiring thing that you felt about him? 
uh, I just felt that, you know, no matter how great you are, no matter how big you are, you're always a human being at the end. And then, I mean, just, I mean, I would never expect such a reception from such a human being, you know. I just felt really close to him. I mean, mm -hmm. even though I didn't know him at all, mm -hmm. I think, I guess being big means that, you know, that you're down to earth at the same time. Mm -hmm. you're, you hold yourself. You don't let, you don't let the wonder world swoop you away. So, yeah, I mean, it, very humbled nature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so actually what made you want to go into poetry. I mean, we see people writing like novels and things, but very few people venture into poetry today. So what made you choose that as your very first book? It wasn't my book or anything like again. Uh, it was just the language that spoke to me at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I mean, now it's changed. Now it's like, I like to write short stories more than I do like to write my poetry. Oh. So do so. we expect a short story book from you? So. I hope so. I mean like in the, in, in like, I was doing 12th grade so I was writing poetry and I was writing, I had this like novel that I um, three-fourth completed mm -hmm. then and then I didn't really, you know, go on to complete it more because mm -hmm. you, you just don't feel the spirit so you just leave it because you know, you can't, you can't do anything with it and if you do anything with it you won't just you just won't be satisfied with it so mm -hmm. you have to you have to put a pause and you have to stop at the end so yeah i stopped over there and then i hadn't continued it which i think might have been a mistake <laughs> <laughs> thinking now but then yeah i, I really couldn't write mm -hmm. at that time so mm -hmm. i think i had this like huge block it's you know the writer's block it sounds so cliche now <laughs> yeah i think it was just one so of those. you actually believe that like a writer's block exists yeah yeah i do <laughs> but i mean after okay you've it, heard it from a writer yeah. now <laughs> your uh, father is a diplomat right uh, which has uh, uh, like which has given you this wide exposure i mean you were raised in so many different cities and different countries so how has this uh, like cosmopolitan uh, upbringing of yours affected your writing? It's just made me more open and it lets me accept more people for how, how and who they are. I mean, um, it just gives you a wide range of how you deal with cultures and how other people's cultures are and how you're supposed to fit yourself in a certain environment and how to deal with certain people. And well, I've, I've always been a recluse. So, I mean, um, this has in some way helped me a lot because I don't think that I would have been a very open person had I not been here. I mean, it's it's made me a little more open, but I'd still say I'm a recluse. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but it's helped me open. I mean, it's broadened my uh, mindset. It's, it's, it's given me more things to think about mm -hmm. than rather a limited, you know, a lane of thought. Mm -hmm. So have you taken part in any social activism or political activism? that you'd like to share with our viewers? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was um, in Hungary, This mm -hmm. uh, there was this movement called uh, Art Against Dis Discrimination. So mm -hmm. they were public they had this whole uh, thing where they would publish um, uh, this uh, magazine, mm -hmm. uh, like a booklet. Uh, they mm -hmm. published a book with uh, dif writers from different regions of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was chosen to represent India. Oh. And, um, that must have been a proud yeah, moment. Yeah, that was like really nice to see your name and then India written next to it. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they made posters and everything and they mm -hmm. uh, demonstrated quite a lot. So yeah, just say, you know, against um, uh, racism. Mm -hmm. so. oh, that's really interesting. Uh, speaking of, you know, uh, cosmopolitan culture, uh, you study at the English and Foreign Languages University in Hyderabad, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so, I mean, I've heard that there are a lot of students there from very, many different countries. So, how, how has uh, the English and Foreign Languages University, how has your experience there uh, affected your work? Uh, I just say that it's made me think more about people. I mean, it's as it is I was traveling, so I'd always meet people from different regions. It wasn't such a new experience for me as I did seem that it was for my friends, you know. I mean, for them it was something completely shocking. And to say, see their point of view and compare it to my own, I mean, it, 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 it helped me realize, you know, at, at where how different I am from them or how... how my non-Indian aspects, basically, mm -hmm. but were not given to me. 
uh, or what I had had and they had not had. So mm -hmm. I mean, it just gave me that scope to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, what inspiration do you find at EFLU? Uh, the atmosphere, it's, it's just so relaxing and I mean, you can just blend in with the environment. No one really bothers you and no one, you know, it's not like people are haunting you or um, it's just a very relaxed place. Seems I mean, like a good place for a recluse. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a perfect place for a recluse. I mean, mm -hmm. you can just do your thing and know, everyone minds their own business. and. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a pleasant place to be. And the library is superb. I mean, it's really massive. It's really big. It's got mm -hmm. an awesome reading collection. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really like the library. And it's also got an AC, which you can, you know, you know <laughs> escape from your hot rooms. <laughs> yeah, it does get pretty hot. So yeah. What is the message that you have to give to the upcoming young writers who hope to be where you are? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, people get really influenced by what they read. And I should just say that you know try to keep a distance between what you read and who you are because at the end of the day who you are matters more than what you read what you read can only influence you so much and who you are defines what you read so I mean you just got to learn to be yourself more than anything mm. that's really good advice thank you <laughs> uh, so would you be kind enough to like read a little part of your book for our um, a poem that uh, inspired me from uh, Shakespeare. So Shakespeare was one of my mentors for this. It starts from the chamber of love and goes on to and sleep in nature's bosom. It's, it's a whole sentence, I'll read it out to you. Enter the chamber of love and sleep in nature's bosom till death begins his quest. So these are the three, um, these are the three layers of the book basically uh, within which uh, are uh, uh, different forms of poetry. So, like the poems are sectioned into these houses, basically. Um, so, this is one from the Chamber of Love, and I will read it. It's called I Compare Thee. Compare me not with the sun, moon, and stars, for they shine only to outshine the other. Compare me not with a flower or a leaf. For they choke upon their own beauty. Compare me not with the ocean or the wind. For they murder without the mark of sin. Compare me not with the vast sky. For it loops upon us, yet lets the plague of corruption splay. Compare me not, compare me not. Okay, thank you so not. much, Nilo. That poem was uh, really touching. Uh, I thought it was really brilliant and I'm sure the view, many of the viewers felt the same way too. So thank you so much for taking time out and you know meeting with us today and thank you all for watching. Uh, signing off here from EFLU. Bye.